Hey yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about GNOME 47 Denver, Denver, Colorado, Rocky Mountain High. September 18th was the day when it was released. I fell asleep at September 19th today. We're going to get the video on time. Don't worry about it. So without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, welcome back once again to my YouTube channel. GNOME 47 has been announced and before, before we dive into the new features, there's a ton. I mean, it looks very familiar, by the way. Uh, same old GNOME, very good, very polished uh, with the pills, with the workspaces, with the control panel. Everything looks really good. You might have noticed the accent color is a little bit different. It's not the real blue that we expect. So we're going to talk about everything. So accent colors is one of the new things which have been introduced this time around. Let's just go to settings. Settings isn't here for some reason. And there we go. We have beautiful accent colors, pink, red, orange, whatever this color is. I don't really like this yellow. We're just gonna stick to purple and let's just so, and let's just show you a place where the accent color is applicable. So this equals sign. Yep, it's changing. Pretty good. And I chose this wallpaper for the video, by the way. I think it looks really good. Okay, let's just go ahead and um, yeah, let's just move on with the video. We have a ton of system enhancements with GNOME 47, by the way. Starting off with the small screen support. So if you have a screen which is of a lower resolution, now the icons appear much bigger and it's way easier to navigate. You also have screencast hardware encoding. So with Intel and AMD GPUs, when you're recording the screen, it's going to use the actual GPU instead of your CPU. So basically what this does is it leaves the CPU to do what you're actually doing and not be bothered by the screen capture. You also have faster and more accurate rendering with GTK, especially for older hardware and mobile devices. For smartphone users with GNOME, this is going to be really, really good. You also get persistent remote desktop sessions. So if you are logged in into a remote session and if you disconnect, when you log back in, it will pick up from where you left off. That is extremely good. You also have new style dialog windows. So as you can see this over here, it looks pretty good. This would change with the accent colors, by the way. Uh, the discard and cancel, these two would remain the same. The save would change. You also get new open and save file dialog. So these are pretty good. Uh, GNOME 47, the file tab, it comes with a lot of changes. You can see this open. And you also have new faster, more capable thumbnail generation on demand. And thumbnails are really useful for uh, previewing the file without actually opening it. I really am a big fan of thumbnails of the files. As I said, Files app has been improved tremendously and you have improved navigation. And this is a new network section, by the way. Uh, let's just show this to you. Files. Yep, there we go. Uh, let's just bring it down a little bit. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, available on current networks, you can connect to a different server. You can check up simple commands, which you might forget. So you don't have to Google. This is really handy. Uh, an I button is never a bad idea. And so uh, the view is easier to understand and use than the previous other locations view. What they have also done is they have included the disks over here. So you can check them very easily. You also have better search information. So searches, uh, if the location that you're searching is not indexed, it would show you the information that it is taking longer time to actually get the result for you because it is not indexed. Communication like this makes any relationship way easier to navigate and GNOME is not an exception. You also have modernized interfaces. So the files app did receive a refreshed interface for GNOME 47. This includes the updated new folder and file compression dialogues. So let's just go ahead to, I, I created a file by the way. So this is a folder you can go and this is a new folder. Dialog box looks pretty good. And this is the file compression dialog box, which also looks pretty good. You can have encrypted zip, zip, tar, and 7z. Not bad settings. So you also have activate on hover. So this is a new accessibility setting, which is I think pretty good. You also have input source previewing. So in the keyboard settings, it is now possible 
to preview input sources from the add input source dialog. This enhancement allows users to see a visual representation of each keyword layout before actually selecting it. You also have mobile suspend options. We're not gonna be able to show this to you because I'm on a laptop recording this video, but if you are on a smartphone, you have different power settings for uh, mobile devices. This enhancement allows for optimized power management, helping to improve battery life. This latest release also includes a great collection of modernization improvements with many settings panels having been upgraded to use the latest interface components, giving a more cohesive and contemporary look. You can see add user, account type administrator, user details, and password. Pretty good. You also have improved online accounts, so IMAP and SMTP email accounts now automatically complete based on the address used. Kerberos accounts use less power on an ongoing basis. I'm not really familiar with what that is, to be very honest with you. Email, calendar, and contact integration has been added to Microsoft 365 accounts. When setting up web dev accounts, available services are now automatically discovered to provide a more streamlined setup experience. Pretty good. Now coming to web, which is Epiphany, the one that I'm using right now to present this video. You get automatically fill forms, pretty good. You have redesigned bookmarks. This looks pretty good, by the way. I guess this is the list. Yep, it's pretty good. And I can view open tabs. Oh, this is just like Safari. That's pretty good. New window, incognito window, uh, preferences, keyword shortcuts about web, pretty good. Privacy reports, a new privacy report feature has been added, which displays how many trackers have been blocked by GNOME Web, making this previously hidden information available allows you to stay informed about your online privacy. It is also similar to Safari, but progress is progress. By the way, if you are using Firefox account authentication process, Firefoxing support has been disabled in GNOME 47, 46.3, and 45, so beware of that if you use it. Calendar. Calendar has also received many bug fixes and plenty of extra polish. Improved handling for read-only events, uh, now indicated by a lock screen, better looking and more usable layout with clearer sections and consistent spacing. Video meeting links are now only displayed once. Placeholders indicate when information is missing. In addition, the event importer and event editor dialogues now gracefully handle hidden and read-only calendars. And the add calendar dialog has also been tweaked to, the, to be clearer and to catch and display errors. Now, ever since GNOME 46 introduced the GNOME Circle project, we also have a new set of apps to go with GNOME 47. Pretty good. You also have minor other changes, for example, with Disk Usage Analyzer, getting a refreshed interface. Let's just go ahead and check out what it is. Okay, a home folder, GNOME OS inside home folder. Okay, looks pretty good. And GNOME OS, so this would be the entire tree. I'm not gonna let it load, it's gonna take a little bit of time. Okay, what cursors have, what did I just say? Weight cursors have been refreshed to add just to the new spinner widgetry in the platform and maps use vector tiles by now. App recommendations have been updated in software, making it easy to find the latest and greatest apps to install. Maps also features public transit routing in selected locations rather than relying on commercial services. Maps leverages a community run transport routing service. This is not gonna be available everywhere. I'm guessing only in Europe also some parts of Europe, I guess. But anyway, I love maps. I love just looking at it and spending hours just finding little, little places. It's like my, one of my favorite hobbies. And it also has a number of technical changes. Not gonna go through them. Uh, the most important of them is the introduction of the ability to play games that uses virtual reality headsets while using Wayland desktop sessions. Pretty good. And the foundations for reliable and hardware accelerated screen sharing needed by the proprietary NVIDIA driver has been added in GNOME 47. Pretty good. Again, if you're using the GPU to share your screen, to record your screen, having the CPU not do it actually frees up the resources so that you're, you can actually focus on what you're doing instead of the screen capture. You also have a few developer experiences. I'm gonna link this page down below the like button if you want to, you can go out and check this out. And yeah, one thing, one very important thing that, that I forgot is to show you the wallpapers. Pretty good list of wallpapers. Uh, let's go ahead and do dark mode. Yeah, these, these do look pretty good actually. Very funky and different looking. I really like this by the way. Uh, I think I'm gonna keep this 
for the thumbnail or maybe a little bit too crowded. Anyway, we're going to find that out. You're going to see it in the thumbnail before even clicking on the video. So with that, we come to the end of this video. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.